Welcome to Painting with Janine Liza. This class can be easily divided into two sessions. One session of drawing and then the next painting. In this class we're going to explore different kinds of lines through creating an artwork. The materials needed are a ruler, pencil with eraser, wooded colour paper taped to a board, either 90 pound weight or 140 pound weight, paper towel, possibly a flat brush, and you're going to have a dry palette for this artwork. We're going to see what happens when we use a dry palette to create this piece. We're going to use cups of water, and you might want to have an extra palette handy just so you have some space to do extra mixing if you have a small dry palette. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with our ruler and our pencil and we're going to create our first line which is going to be a horizontal line. A horizontal line is a point that goes from one side across the page this way sideways. And a horizontal line is also used to define the horizon. In this case we are creating a horizon line up here on our page. So this line can be as thick as your ruler or a little bit thicker. Okay, horizontal. Now we're going to create two diagonal lines that come from this point right here. And I'll draw one of them first so you can see where it's going to go. Just before the end of the page on this side, maybe half an inch. And there's our first diagonal line. Diagonal lines kind of angle like this, whereas the horizontal line is straight across the page. This one kind of angles up and down. We're going to do another diagonal line. Oops, dropping my pencil. Coming from the same point here, but opening up the ruler down at this end. About here. Now these are just three lines on a page, but look what we've created. We have a line for a horizon line. Horizon line where the sun will rise. Well, I'll put a sun up here. And then we have a road created with two diagonal lines. We've already created the basis for our scene. Now, we're going to create a few vertical lines. Vertical is up and down. We're going to put an, a vertical line about, say, an inch and a half from this line. We'll do a dot here, and then we'll do a vertical line that goes up like that. Just going over that line a little bit. Then we'll put another one about an inch from this line, and it can be a little bit shorter than that one. Then we'll put another one about, let's say, an inch again from that line, and even shorter. We can actually balance them out a little bit so that they're like smaller, getting bigger. These are going to be trees. We want to give them some space between them. Now, we're going to do some zigzag lines, kind of curvy zigzag. So starting at the top of the tree, which is the vertical line, we're going to just zigzag like this with a bit of a curve getting wider as we come down to the bottom. And we're going to do this on all three of these trees. Now this is just a guide for where your paint's going to go. We're going to be painting those soon. And this one too. Now I'm going to draw a wavy line because this is all very, it's all very geometric right now, very rigid, and we want to soften the scene up a little. So we're going to put a wavy line that starts here and goes down towards the back here. And notice how it's wider at the front and it gets smaller towards the back. Okay, so this is like snow, like a snow hill. 
the, when the snow gathers at the side of the road. And now we're going to add another line that is actually a broken line. So find roughly find the middle of your two diagonal lines. And then all the way up to the point here, you want to kind of go down the center of it. And then just do these little dashes. These are created by leaving gaps in your line. So as you go along, you would draw a little line, lift your pencil, place it down again, draw another one. These lines should be longer in the front and smaller as they go towards the vanishing point in the distance. Okay, so now we're going to add a few curved lines. We did one curve here, but now we're going to do a fun curve one here. We'll start with that. We're going to create a snowman. I'll tell you that now so you know what space to give yourself. So we're going to start with a circle. Now you can freehand it or draw around something, but I'm just going to try to freehand it. And because it's a snowman, it's going to be forgiving. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And I'm going to do two ovals. So he's going to have a belly oval or a chest oval. And again, you can just shape your oval using dashes and carefully rounding it. You can always erase and fix where you like. And then I'm going to do a larger oval at the bottom. And they're sitting on top of each other, so the, the top one kind of sinks into the, the one below like that. Okay, so there's my, my base oval. All right, and then I'm going to do a couple diagonal lines for his arms sticking up like this and then turn those into like little branches just by putting a couple of little twigs sticking out of that like that okay so now I have my snowman and these are the lines that are the foundation for our painting now what I'm going to do because my my pencil drawing is so dark is I'm going to erase a little bit of the darkness of my lines just to lighten them. You want to be able to see them, but you don't want them to be so strong. So I'm just going to gently erase over my lines just to take the dark, hard line off. There we go. Just so that the painting, uh, the, the colors of the paint really represent the picture more than the harsh lines. And I'm going to show this to you after I've erased a little bit. So I'm not pressing so hard that I take all the pencil off the page. So once I'm done lightening the pencil marks with the eraser, I take a piece of paper towel and gently brush the eraser bits off of the paper. I use the paper towel because our fingers have oils in them. So if I use my hands all the time on the paper, I might get oils into the paper. And then where the oils are, the paint might not stick so well. Or it might not absorb into the paper as well. Okay, so now you see, you can see the faint lines are still there. So we can see what we're painting. Now, this brush came with this palette, so I'm gonna try using this brush, although I'm not sure how well it will work. We will find out. And just wet it first to give it a bit of strength and make sure that the hairs can make a bit of a point if I need it. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna start with painting our sun. And that's fairly easy. We'll take a little bit of water and put it onto the yellow. And we'll try painting straight from the dry palette here uh, before we make uh, larger amounts of paint on the, the empty palette spaces. Okay, so I'm just gently using the tip of the brush and I'm painting the sun. Very vibrant. There we go. Now what we can do is we can wet our brush again and get a little bit of yellow and go around the sun so we make that a little larger we know where the sun is because we see the line of the sun there but now we're expanding the shine out a little bit and while that's still wet we can wet our brush and go into the orange paint and we'll get a bit of orange we may have to add a bit more water if it's not 
um, coming off the dry palette. When the dry palette is new, it's uh, very, very dry, so you need to add a couple of drops to get the paint to go, to get going. And then we'll add that to the outside of the yellow. And we can touch the yellow a little bit with it so that it uh, connects. And then they might blend together a little bit. And that's okay, because it'll give it a very nice look. So now we're gonna stretch this orange across the sky a little bit here. And then maybe just go on the edge of the yellow and the orange and smudge them together a bit. There we go. Stretch this across the sky. And then I think we'll get a little bit of uh, pink. And there's a very vibrant pink here. I just want to add a little warmth. So I'm going to add a little pink. Wetting the pink again. And just kind of put it on top of the orange and overlap a little bit. And then get more pink. So you're overlapping it so it looks like it's sort of coming from that area, from the orangey area, and then spreading. There you go. Kind of blends together nicely. And then we'll spread that pink over. Ooh, very pretty. That's a beautiful sky. Pink. And then we'll move to the blue. So if we have here, I have on the palette now, I see I splashed a little bit, so I'll take some paper towel and just dab off the paint that got onto other colors. You can just wet it a tiny bit and dab it off like that. Now I'm gonna get a bit of the blue that is right here. And I'm gonna blend it with the edge of the pink, so I might get a bit of purple happening there as I do that, because the pink is still wet. And then I'm gonna make the corner a bit more water, make the corner more blue. And there we go, so it's a beautiful sunrise happening there. And if you see patches where it's kind of patchy, you can always grab a little bit more, wash your brush first, get a different, uh, like a little bit more of the orange and put it into the orange, you know, to smooth it over a little bit and so on. You can get a bit more of the pink. So you just keep playing with the colors there a little bit until you're happy with how it, how it's blending and becoming a beautiful sky. Okay, and there's the sky. Now we'll switch to the gray paint to paint the road. We'll go with gray. So there's a gray here next to the black. I'm not sure what colors you'll have on your palette. Hopefully you have something. This is one of the most basic palettes. So hopefully, it's a very faint gray, there you go. Because even though the tar goes on the road black, over time it becomes kind of a light gray, doesn't it? There we go. And if we do a light gray, we might be able to put a bit of yellow on the center for those little dashes, but I'm not certain yet. We'll have to see how that goes. You might have to use like a colored marker later or something to a yellow marker to put like yellow lines. Okay. Now if there is snow hills there, the side of the road is not going to be perfectly smooth. Now we'll work on our trees. If you have two tones of green, start with the lighter one. If you only have one tone, that's fine, just use that one. So now I'll start with the lighter one, and again we're going to just zigzag this down, getting bigger and bigger as it goes down, like wider, so wider zigzag. And just follow the lines you created, but roughly, because there you go, see how it covers over all those lines because we erased them a little bit too. And you've got your tree, and then you've got a slightly smaller tree. And then an even smaller tree. Now we're gonna have to let that dry and then we're gonna put some darker green on there for a bit of a shadow. Even smaller tree, there we go. Now we have our snow hill. 
So we have these beautiful colors in the sky, so we can kind of use them in an artsy way and kind of reflect them on the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of yellow and maybe put some on the horizon line here a little bit, just in front of the sun and there. And then I'll get a bit of orange. It's almost like you're doing reflections on water, but it's it's on the snow. So we'll just do some wavy lines like this, the orange, and then maybe a little bit with the pink. Let's see up here on the horizon line, we can go along here a little bit with the pink. And then we can move into the blue over there. And we could put a little wavy line or so here with the pink. You know, just kind of indicating the snow hills. And maybe a little blue back here on that horizon line there. Ooh, that's very strong. So I'm going to just dab that off the tissue because that was a bit too strong. A bit too strong. Bit of water and dab that off. Now a little bit of water, we could use a little water on those lines that we just put on and spread that over the snow a little bit. So the snow kind of changes color with the colors that we put on. Not the green though, we want to just spread some of that pink and, and blue into the sort of snowy areas. I'll get water on my brush and again with the yellow and orange here, I'm just going to smudge them a little bit into the snowy area. It just gives that sort of reflection effect, the color from the sunrise hitting the ground like that. Okay, now I'm going to mix a lighter tint of blue. Perhaps three large scoops of water with the big brush into an empty palette hole and then I'll get some of that lovely blue in, make the lighter tint, and use it to highlight the curvy line of the snow hill and other small curved lines in the snow. So we've got these snow hills here, and we can just kind of add a little bit like that to uh, define the hills a little bit, the little snow hills on the edge of the road. Now just putting a little bit in here, like this, and here, just a little bit like that, and highlighting that line a little bit more. And then in the distance here, we can also bring it along the edge of the road on this side. And we could indicate that there are hills on this side by curving our lines. So here we can curve the line and then come along and curve the line again. So follow along the path, but then curve the line in to make hills on this side. Just like that. Let's also use the blue to outline the snowman. There we go, and give him a little shadow on this side because the sunrise is here, so it's going to be bright, 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 and the shadow is going to be on the opposite side. So let's put his shadow right down here. There we go. And these trees are also going to need some shadows, but they're down behind the hill, their shadows, so we won't see them too much. We can put a little bit there, but they're down behind this behind the hill. And then let's put a little blue along the edge of this road too. Just here we'll have some shadow. Okay. And again, you can play with your, your horizon line here if you want to add a little more something. A little bit more pink. And then smudge it in. orange, a little bit more orange 
finish here and just smudge it in. You know, so you can play with your colors a little bit to get the effect and the look that you want. Make a little more pink here. I can add some water to it. So the paint on, like, strength, strength of the paint can be weakened by just adding water, thinning it out as much as you want. You can use the full intensity with just a tiny bit of water, or you can weaken it and just blend it in. Okay. So now we are going to put some details on this snowman, unless the trees are dry. Okay, trees are dry, so let's do a little shadow on the trees. So let's go to the darker green. If you don't have a darker green on your palette, you can use blue for the shade on the trees. So the sun is over here. The trees are getting the brightness of the sun on this side, but on this side there's going to be a bit of a shadow. So we'll just put, kind of dot on and scrape on a little bit of darker green on this side of the tree. There we go. So it's just a little darker on this side. Maybe a bit of light is coming through the tree. And there we go. And the same with this little guy here. All right. Now, if you have a finer brush, you could probably do finer strokes there. The brush that came with this palette is a little thicker, so I'm just working with what came with it. And there we go. You can still see some of the lighter green, and you can always add a little bit more of the lighter green too. So if you feel like you went over it too much with the dark green, you can get some more of the lighter green and just touch up those edges that you want to see the lighter green on that and just bring out a little bit more of that as well. There we go. Now we'll move down to the lower corner of the painting and focus on the snowman. I found a nice orange and I'm going to use it to give him a carrot nose. Just a little dot probably. If the carrot's facing you a dot is fine or you can do it. Drag it out a little bit like that. And then we'll do the little eyes. There you go. See what shape the end of your brush makes for the eyes. And then we'll do dots for the buttons on the body. Should I give them one down here too? There. And brown branches. So a little bit of brown here. There's a stronger brown. Brown branches. Try and scrape a very tiny bit of the brush to do thin branches if you can. I'm just using the very tip of the brush. I'm going to give the snowman a bright pink scarf. I like pink. Oh, and a hat. Yeah, I'm going to use the pink again. Let's see, we'll do a woolly hat. A woolly hat. It goes like that. And then like that. And then a bubble. The bubble. There it is. Yay! And there we have it. Other details that can be added could be little birds in the distance. Um, you could put a little bit more shadow down the side of the road, like we could get some more gray and we could layer a little bit more shadow at the edge of the road here because the, uh, the snow hill would create a little bit of shadow on there when the sun rises, just like that. And then in order to smudge the edge of that out, you just use a bit of water and just blend just the edge into what's there already. So not all of it, but just kind of blend it so that you don't have a sharp edge. It's a sharp transition. There you go. And there you have it. Now that's a painting of various lines. A little bit of fun. We can put our signature on the painting using the black paint 
And I want to drain this brush a little bit because I'm it's quite thick, so I'll be careful. Now I'll just sign my signature right here, but this brush is a very tricky one. There we go. <laughs> it gave me part of my signature. But I might try that again with another brush, or you could use a marker to put your signature on the page later. And there we have it. There's a painting created with a very economical paint palette that was actually from the dollar store. Now, if you want to clean up your palette a little bit, what you would do is get that brush out of there again. I think you need little fingers for this. Where's my pencil? <laughs> there it is. Um, just get a bit of water and a wet whatever is uh, on the outside and just gently wipe it with your paper towel like that. I hope you've enjoyed this fun way to learn some cool lines. We've got our, where's my ruler? Our horizontal line that has given us a nice horizon line across the top. We've got our diagonal lines that have given us a nice road with a vanishing point. And then we have our zigzag lines that did our trees. And we have our curved lines on the hills and a curved line for the sun. We also have our curved lines creating shapes for the head and body of the snowman and our vertical lines for the trees. I hope you've enjoyed this class and I look forward to creating the next one. See you next time. You'll find more classes like this one on Art with Janine Liza on YouTube.